Hello and welcome to episode 40 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing that takes place here in my home studio which is just outside of Toronto and by the lake. It is October 29th today and I cannot believe how quickly September and October have gone by. It has been super busy around here in preparation for Needles Up and Rhinebeck and I know I've shared that before, so you guys probably know, and I've seen all of the recaps that are popping up on YouTube. Um, but I'm excited to share a little bit with you today and finally sit down and get back to normal. So I've made myself a cup of tea in my beautiful new mug, which my friend Meg from Wool and Cookies gave me while we were in Rhinebeck. It is an Emma Bridgewater mug, and it is so pretty. I've made myself some tea and I am just going to get right into what's going on around here. If you are looking for me elsewhere, you can find me on Instagram as Sandy by the Lakeside. I'm on Ravelry as Sandy Ran. And I also have a website which is bythelakeside.com where I sell my project bags and leather goods. So let's get started. I am going to get into some knitting and then I think I will share a little bit more about Rhinebeck and Needles Up, the New York Wool and Sheep Festival. I'm sure you guys have seen lots of recaps popping up on YouTube and I didn't really film as much as I had hoped to. It was kind of a different experience for me this year because I brought my family and I was participating in the Needles Up event. So I will share a little bit more about that later, but first let's get into what I've been working on. I am really excited on the road trip to Rhinebeck. I managed to get a bit of work done on a sock that has been worked on for a couple of years. This is um, a half object. So this is my shorty sock that I've shown on Instagram and probably on my podcast quite a few times. I love this project and I received this yarn on my first trip to Rhinebeck when I was um, staying with Amber from Makers Haven and Angie from Camel City Dye Works and Kay the Crazy Sock Lady. We stayed in a cabin and Amber had dyed up this yarn. Um, she was inspired by our cabin and Rhinebeck and I cherished this gift. I've had it in a project bag for so long and I finally just got the urge to finish it this fall. I think the colors are so pretty. It is a little shorty sock, so I just use a vanilla sock pattern that I normally use. It is 64 stitches. Um, I think it's a 2.25 millimeter needle. And I decided to do just a few rows of the contrast color at the top of the cuff. And I put in the contrast heel, uh, which is a heel flap and gusset, which is my preferred sock. And then at the toe, I just decided to do a couple of rows of the contrast color again. I thought it would be cute. And I love it. I love it so much. I have it in my leather pouch, which I started using as a sock whip bag. So this is my large leather pouch. And it fits perfectly in here. So I am anxious to cast on the second sock. I really love it. Here is the yarn wound up and the contrast mini. It's no longer available, but I wanted to share it because I thought it was so pretty. So, one sock done. And I think I've mentioned before, I have not been knitting as much as I would like to. I've been really, really busy. But I feel like after being at Rhinebeck and my schedule starting to calm down a little bit, um, I can see a lot more knitting in my near future. So I've also been working on a beautiful shawl I've shown you. I transferred it into this project bag, which is a new favorite. It's one that I had at Needles Up. And I kept one for myself because I loved it so much. This is my Trelawney shawl by Cleverest Stitch. And I haven't made a ton of progress, but I've done a little bit more on it and I'm just enjoying it so much. It's a really enjoyable knit. This is exactly the kind of shawl 
that I love working on. It doesn't stop me from talking to anyone and I can keep on the pattern, no problem. I also love that she puts stitch counts at the end of each section so you can kind of double check, make sure everything is okay. And um, this yarn is spun right round. And I also got this yarn on my first trip to Rhinebeck. So I think some of these projects were really inspired by Rhinebeck and fall. And I love this. It's taken me a long time to get through it, but that's okay. I do love it. The colors are, I think this is Katmandu. And this was the, um, the special Rhinebeck colorway two, three years ago. Two? I'm not sure. The first year I went to Rhinebeck, so. Loving this project. Um, this is definitely what I will be focusing on for the next little bit. And I'm also working on my weekender sweater because I've not forgotten about it. There was no way that I was getting that done in time for Rhinebeck. Um, but I did get a new bag for it because I saw these bags on Amy Beth's website. She is the fat squirrel. And I loved this print so much and I don't have one of these larger fat squirrel bags. So I ordered this a few weeks before Rhinebeck and I transferred my beautiful weekender sweater into it. Of course I'm in the middle of a row, but I'll just quickly show you because I've shown you this before where I am with this project. So this is uh, the weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry. Let's see, where am I here? So I have, I can't remember if this is the front or the back, but I have completed one side of it where um, I've got this beautiful ribbing up at the top. And I've got some of the stitches on um, waist yarn and then this part here has been um, bound off so that that will be the neckline. And now I am just continuing in the same way for the other side. Make sure I don't lose any stitches. And I'm almost ready to start the um, short row shaping and finish off the rib for that side. So I'm getting really close to having the front and the back complete. And once that is joined, I will pick up for sleeves. Super excited about having this for the winter. I love this pattern and this yarn so much. This is Brooklyn Tweed shelter and the color is snowbound it's pretty sunny in here there it is so i'm really enjoying this still um i cleaned up my whole kind of whip basket that sits in my family room and this is usually what i keep it in and i just kind of cleaned out some of the summer projects and extra projects that i didn't really need sitting out and so now I'm focusing on my sweater, <clears throat> my shawl, finishing my socks. But before I cast on my second sock, I cast on a new project. And I put it in this small project bag, which is my watercolor bag. I think there's a couple more of these in my shop right now. And I really wanted to cast on the College Bound hat by Christina from Chelsea Yarns. It is her pattern. It is available on her website. And I really wanted to make this on the way to Rhinebeck. I didn't get a chance to cast it on then, but when I got back, I did. And it is using this beautiful yarn that she gave me. It is the By the Lakeside colorway. So I've been really excited to make something with this. And I think it's gonna make a super cute hat. So this is her new, um, Slubby textured yarn. I can't remember the name of it actually. Let's see what it is. I don't think I have it on my label because she sent me one really early. So that is um, that new base that she has. It's just beautiful with all that texture and it's kind of curly looking and it has tufts, little bits of beautiful pieces in there and I've just cast on for her college bound pattern. It is a free pattern so you can go on her website and check it out and she also has pictures of it and she's talked about it in her podcast. It's a super simple 
um, kind of slouchy, cute hat. So super excited to have this. I've been thinking about hats for the upcoming cold weather and I'm really excited about making a few new ones this year. I have a couple in my, um, in my mind already. I really want to make um, Tristan from Dragon Horde Yarns Everyday Slouchy Beanie. I hope that's the right name. I have yarn in mind for that. And um, I still want to make a few that were in my queue last year. So I've got lots of skeins kind of set aside to do some hat projects this winter. So let's move on to a bit of a Rhinebeck and Needles Up recap. This year was very different for me, and um, as you probably know, I was a part of the Needles Up event on Friday that is put on by Legacy Fiber Arts. And so there was a lot of preparation going into the weekend for that. My mind was really preoccupied. I didn't really do the normal researching vendors and planning of um, shopping for the weekend. So. I was also getting my whole family ready to go because I ended up bringing Glenn and the boys with me because I thought it would be great moral support and help in my booth and also they would have a chance to experience Rhinebeck which I love so much. So it was kind of different going into it and we went a little bit earlier than I normally do. We drove down on Thursday and it takes about seven and a half hours from where we are. So it was a bit of a not a super long road trip but long enough and we didn't stop too much we just stopped for lunch and got there on Thursday evening kind of unloaded what we could and tried to get a good rest for the next day because Friday was needles up and um, as you probably know from previous podcasts and Instagram I was um, participating as a vendor at needles up which is put on by legacy fiber arts it's an event that's been going on for a few years now. I think maybe this is the third one in Rhinebeck. And I was so thrilled to be a part of it. It was so much fun. It was not overly stressful. I mean, there's minimum stress because of course you're worried, did I bring enough and am I prepared? Did I forget anything? But other than that kind of worry, it was just so easy, so wonderful, amazing people were working that event and so I felt very fortunate to be a part of it and get to spend a little bit of time with Chelsea and Sue and their families and have my family there too. I think that was really the highlight for me was just being able to share everything with my family. Glenn was working in the booth and James, I was really surprised, he's my youngest son. He barely left. He wanted to be a part of it. He was having fun and laughing at his dad on the register. And uh, my older son, Camden, not a big fan of crowds. And so he kind of stayed away a little bit. It was a bit overwhelming for him. And so we were um, kind of jumping between checking on him and having just a great time. So for all of the wonderful people that got a chance to come and say hello and see us, thank you so very much. It was probably the highlight of the entire weekend. And um, as much as you get to meet people and chat with people at Rhinebeck, it was just so much fun to be in one spot and have people kind of come by and say hello, whether you purchased or not, I thank you so much. And um, I, hope, I hope that we got a chance to say hello. I know at some points it's a little bit hectic. It's really hard to give everyone um, time and have deeper conversations, but I got to see lots of people that I know from before and a whole bunch of new people. So it really filled my heart. It was a wonderful, wonderful day. And by the end of it, we were just exhausted. We almost collapsed in our rooms. We were just, it was just kind of exhaustion from from the wonderful experience and just from standing and smiling and talking to everyone. And we just had a really low key night and hung out with really great people. And I'm just so thankful for all of it. So after that, it was pretty much go to bed. We ate something, we went to bed and we headed to the fairgrounds on Saturday. We didn't go first, first thing, so we didn't have to line up, which was great. We slept in just a little bit. We had a nice breakfast and I didn't really have plans 
for shopping, which made it a little bit different. And I totally learned something about myself. And maybe it's, you know, with a lot of other people too, you'll find this true. Because I wasn't with a group of knitters on the fairgrounds, I felt like my experience was a little bit different. I didn't do the research and so I wasn't, I was just wandering and enjoying and walking into booths and areas that I really had no plans to buy in, but I was just really taking in all of the beautiful handmade items and yarn and I really bought very, very little. I will share what I came home with in a few minutes, but it really was just walking around with the boys and trying to enjoy some food. And I think one of my highlights for that day was just sitting in the food area at a table with some friends and relaxing and just not even thinking about anything anymore. The, the, the show was over, the responsibilities were kind of done, and so it was just a really beautiful day. It was sunny and perfect weather. And I got to see so many wonderful people again. So totally, every year it's about the people, but I think this year it was even more so. It was, it seemed busier than I had ever seen it before. I've only been there three times, but this one was definitely, um, it was, it was so packed. It was filled with people. We really wanted to get some donuts, but the lineup was just way too much. So we enjoyed food, just walking around. We looked at the animals, which I, that was on my list of things to do. And, um, and then went to the hill for the podcaster meetup. And even that was a little different for me because I kind of stayed on the outskirts of it. Um, I think my boys really wanted to be there and see it, but then my older son, I think he was a little bit overwhelmed. And so I didn't want to kind of go into the middle where it was super crowded and loud. And so we just kind of stayed on the edge and met with a few people and I missed a lot of people that I wish I had been able to say hello to, but that's okay. It was um, a little bit different and still so, so wonderful. So after that, what did we do? I think we just took our time and then after the podcaster meetup, we decided to leave. We went for lunch and Went back to the hotel so the boys could swim and just relax a bit. And I think I did a little bit of knitting, which was really nice. And then the next day, um, the next day was a little bit tricky. I was trying to figure out how do I make the family happy and do what I want to do. And so we ended up just spending some time in Rhinebeck in the little town and looking at some shops. We went to the candy shop. Uh, we went to Bread Alone went to a diner. We just had a really nice walk around town and I went to a beautiful art shop that Sue from Legacy Fiber Arts told me about. It was really, really amazing. I loved it. So that was our Rhinebeck and Needles Up weekend. We had a wonderful time and we didn't leave until Monday, which was kind of nice to give us that extra night just to relax but it was so good to get home and unpack and get back to normal. So after that, I did have a shop update and I hope that if you've been waiting for something, um, you finally got a chance to get it because I know the last month or two has been a little bit iffy in the shop just while I've been preparing for Needles Up. And I thought I would just let you know that there are still project bags, both the large and the small, in my signature denim options and also some other fun prints. I've restocked tote bags and I did get some new leather scissor cover colors that are also still available in the shop. And I thought I would just share the new colors with you. So these are the rose gold embroidery scissors that I have in my shop. And this is the new red scissor cover. So cute. I love having new colors, new options. And then I also added some navy and orange into the shop. So if you're looking for any of those, they are all in the shop. So that covers my shop news. Um, and then after the shop update, I've just been trying to um, get back on track and get back to normal and um, balance a little bit more of the work and home stuff. I'm very excited. I feel like November for me, I am really going to be focusing on um, 
more creative time. I've made a decision. One of my friends, Maria, who is in sort of a stationary and art journaling group that I'm in, she decided a little while ago that she is doing a November no buy and I decided to join in on it. I have heard about these before and I've never felt inclined to do it, but for some reason this year I just thought what a great way to stay, stay off of the internet, stay out of shops, um, and not buy, not necessarily because I don't want to buy anything, but more because I really want to enjoy what I have been buying. I haven't been able to keep up with the knitting I want to do and I've got beautiful journaling supplies and art supplies and I really just want to use them and so instead of spending time getting distracted by new things, new shiny things, I really want to make November a month where I use what I have, enjoy it, experiment with it, and also just take a little bit of a break from um, accumulating stuff because that's always nice to um, kind of recharge in that way. So I'm really excited about my November no buy, mostly because I have things I want to sew, some clothing patterns, I've got a lap quilt, I've got some art stuff I really want to experiment with, and lots of knitting that I'd like to do. And I know I won't get it all done, but just opening up that space, um, I feel like it's going to be a focus and I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, so now I'm going to share what I came home with from Frying Back and Needles Up. I've got it all in this adorable bag that my friend Christina gave me because she is my um, Charlotte Tilbury um, twin. And I've got lots of good stuff in here. I was so fortunate. I've got a few gifts from people that I love so much. The first one is this gorgeous Knitting Loft tote bag that Maria from the Knitting Loft gave me. She was there with a whole huge Knitting Loft crew and I got to say hello to so many familiar faces. It was so nice to see everyone and I love this tote bag. This is the most awesome store in Toronto. So thank you so much, Maria. Um, let's see. Oops. Oh, I also got this on Friday at Needles Up. I got to see Amanda from Sweet Skein of Mine, and she gave me these beautiful minis of her hand-dyed yarn. She's based out of New Brunswick, and if you haven't checked out her Instagram to see the amazing sweaters that she makes, you really should. Her colors and yarn choices and patterns are incredible, and she's such a lovely lady. So thank you so much, Amanda. I loved seeing you there, and I hope you had a great weekend. And thank you so much for my minis, which are going to go into my blanket. I also decided over the weekend to keep this bag for myself. It was at Needles Up, and I think I have maybe one left in my shop. It was one of my favorites with all these ladies on it. And I kept it because Christina from Chelsea Yarns gave me some beautiful yarn of hers and it just matched perfectly so I, I couldn't resist. It's in her Rhinebeck colorway which is absolutely stunning. She gave me a skein of her DK and mohair. I really love these colors so so much and originally I thought I was going to make a hat but then I saw that she made um, a hat Dana by Byron handmade out of these and so I think I might copy because it looked beautiful and I've been really wanting to make that pattern. So pretty. So thank you so much Christina. Um, let's see. Oh, I also saw my sweet friend Maria who is Woolen Forest on Instagram and her shop is called Forest Charm on Etsy. And she gave me this beautiful progress keeper. I've talked about her before. Um, she's such a lovely person. And uh, we got to chat. She was actually one of the few people, it must have been a quiet moment. I got to chat with her and her husband just a little bit and saw them again on Saturday. And they're just amazing people. I wish we could have sat and knit for a little while, Maria, but. It was so busy and I'm so thankful um, for you in this community and for your beautiful workmanship. Now, I should share, I might as well do that right now, 
that I purchased a few things from her shop a few weeks ago when she first, I think it was when she first opened her shop, which might have even been a month or so ago. And I've taken them off of all of the beautiful packaging and cards that she normally puts them on because I was so excited to use them, but I really wanted to share. I got this set, which I believe is lapis. I don't know if you can see how beautiful. You probably can't, it's a little bit sparkly. That Progress Keeper came with these little stitch markers not doing them justice and I think the other one I got is a beautiful moonstone it's absolutely gorgeous but I put it on one of my traveler's notebooks and so um, I don't have it with me right now and then she also gave me this beautiful charm which I love it's these little stacked stones so if you love um, beautiful things for your knitting projects uh, progress keeper stitch markers um, these were so unique and beautiful and I highly suggest you check out her shop. So thank you so much Maria for that um, sweet gift. Hmm. Oh, when we went to um, Rhinebeck on Sunday, just me and the boys, we went to the yarn shop that is there and I cannot remember the name right now. But when we left, Glenn handed me this little bag and said, oh I got you something. So he got me a couple of little souvenirs, including a sticker for my journal, which I really appreciated, and this cute little pom-pom sheep on a keychain. So that was really cute, another gift. Um, okay, I'm going to continue with my um, purchases from Needles Up. I wish I had gotten a little bit more. It was one of those moments where I was a bit overwhelmed and because I didn't plan, I didn't want to make a quick decision and when I got home I thought, oh, I wish I shopped a little bit more. But it was so busy and um, I think I will do that next time. So I went over to Sucra Sucra Miniatures because I knew I wanted some more Harry Potter charms and I got quite a few that James helped me pick out. They were so much fun. I don't know, I don't think I have the proper names of all of them, but this one here is the little mandrake, so cute. Um, I got the chocolate frog with what looks like hot cocoa. I love these, they're so much fun. I got a little pumpkin pasty with, I don't know what drink is, but a little cup of something. They're so detailed and so beautiful. And then the last two are not Harry Potter themed, but I got this beautiful little pie. And a Moscow Mule. So I love those. And because I'm in Canada, sometimes shipping can be um, a lot. So it was really nice to see them in person and pick a few charms up. On the other side, on one side of me was uh, the Tuft Woolens booth and I have never, have I ever? I mean, I went to Needles Up the first year, but I think that was all a blur, but this was the first time I have ever been um, at a Tuft Woolens booth and it was like heaven. I think I jumped over there maybe three, four or five times to look and pop things in a little basket and then come back for more. So I really loved being there. It's I was in the best corner for uh, the fumes because it smelled beautiful all day. And I showed a little bit of restraint, but I got some beautiful, beautiful things. So eucalyptus lemon is one of my favorites. I've had this before. I absolutely love this scent. And so I picked up another one of those. And then a sort of a souvenir. Um, to Rhinebeck Weekend, I got Cider Donut, which also smells wonderful. I loved that one so much that I got two of the hand bombs of the Cider Donut. It's kind of cinnamony and fresh apple. It's wonderful. I decided to try, I've never tried their lip balms, so I got a Cider Donut and Strawberry Shortcake which was, by the way, one of my favorite toys when I was a little girl. And then I got another hand balm in Chai Spice. And that's really, really nice. I've never um, been able to smell this one 
in person before so I'm really excited to add these to my project bags and um, not only do I use them on my hands when they're in my project bags but sometimes I take the bar of um, soap wash or sock soap and I put it in my project bag because it makes everything smell so good. Um, so at Needles Up, I went over to the Classy Squid um, booth and I have never spun in my life and I really didn't want to take that on right now but now I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't purchase one of her um, drop spindles because it was beautiful and so I know one day that is going to be a purchase that I make because um, I loved her booth, I loved everything she had, and I really want to try that one day. But for now, I'm focusing on what I have. I'm going to try to stick to that. I also um, went to the other vendors there too, but I think it was just busy and I was overwhelmed. And I didn't get a chance to purchase from everyone, but um, everything was so beautiful. It was so tempting. Okay, so at one point I finally got a chance to go over to the Legacy Fiber Arts booth because I knew I wanted some yarn. I don't really need much yarn, so I was being really, um, what's the word, just mindful of that and not sort of going overboard, but I knew that I wanted this mini set. I had my eye on this, I had seen them post about this earlier in the fall and I knew I wanted this mini set. It is the Fall Harvest set and these colors just stole my heart. They are so beautiful. They are definitely going into um, a new blanket that I'm hoping to start pretty soon. I've got my blanket basket or bag right there. I decided to take out my cozy memories and see if I was still interested and I'm not. So kind of put that aside, took my needles off of that. And I think I might start the Northeasterly blanket or is it Northeastern? I can't remember, but it's the beautiful kind of chevron strips that tons of people are making. And I think this will be perfect to go in that basket. So while I was there with James, Sue was um, so kind and kind of popped in a few more into my little basket and now I've got the best, most beautiful collection of minis I've ever seen. How lucky am I? So this is the P.S. I Love You. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. So, so beautiful. And then Love Notes. I also can't get enough of this one. Oh my gosh. I don't know, there's something about Sue and Chelsea's yarn that it's like you get these pops of color, but they, they don't overwhelm me. They're not, they, they're just the perfect balance between pops of color and um, some subtle neutrals. I don't know how they do it. They're very talented, but this is the Love Notes one, which I think is, you know, a close second favorite to that one. And then the last one I have here is called Feed Me. Super fun. I mean, look at them all together how beautiful will that be so thank you so much sue and chelsea i love them i am so happy to add these gorgeous minis to my collection and i don't have much else but when i was at rhinebeck on saturday this is one thing i knew i wanted i did not think i'd be able to find it and i just stumbled upon it so i found this shelly can pin which says, this is my Rhinebeck sweater and it's in a bag. And of course, so suitable for me because I did not get a Rhinebeck sweater done this year. So I really wanted this pin. I love it. Um, I also picked up a few of these Mason Dixon books at Rhinebeck in, um, I'm not sure what they call it, but the whole big book area, which I love. It's one of my favorite places. And basically, this is what I bought when I was at Rhinebeck at the Sheep and Wool Festival. A pin and these. And I'm actually really proud of myself. I wish I had found a little bit more. There were a few things I wish I got, but I didn't see them. And um, I'm really excited to have these. Meg from Woolen Cookies 
um, she had been talking about these and it kind of piqued my interest so I had researched them and these were the ones I got so I got these I got downtown wanderlust and big joy so I think they're gonna be really nice um, I love the size of them they are perfect I was really happy with that purchase and then the last thing I purchased over the weekend and I'm not counting Target because that doesn't count um, were these little rifle paper company notebooks that I picked up at a beautiful stationery stationery shop in the town of Rhinebeck I actually, um, it was the first time being at Rhinebeck where I found the art store and the stationery shop and I love them both. So these are just the perfect notebooks to jot things down and keep in your purse or your project bag. And that is it. My bag is empty. So I have so many beautiful things. Oh, there is one other thing that I did want to share that I purchased when we were in the town of Rhinebeck at the candy shop. Got lots of candy for the kids. I also got fudge at Rhinebeck, so there's that, but that's pretty much gone. But when we were at the, um, the candy shop, I spotted this tea and it intrigued me. And it's actually what I have today in my beautiful mug from Meg. It's hot cinnamon spice. And I do love peppermint tea, but I had never tried cinnamon and this is so good. It almost tastes like those cinnamon candy hearts that you get at Valentine's Day. It's so warm and delicious. So I thought I would share that with you guys too. So to end things off today, I have a couple of beautiful things that were sent to me. And so I have decided to do a really small giveaway and share some beautiful goodness that was sent to me. So the first thing, I've had this for a while, but I have not been able to podcast. Um, it's from Knit Circus Yarns. Jennifer and the Knit Circus team were so generous and sent me a gift along with something to give away to one of you. And so this is called um, Ringmaster. Look at these. They're so pretty. It is... Um, 100% superwash merino, 100 gram skein, and this color is growing like a weed, and this one is home on the range. And I actually think I'm going to keep this one because I always gravitate to this, and I think I have a lot of this in my collection. So this is going to be the beautiful skein of gradient yarn that I will be um, including in a giveaway along with this beautiful pin that they included, enamel pin. And um, I'm really excited. I think it would make a beautiful cowl or hat, or maybe even scarf, I'm not sure, but that is going to be included. So thank you so much to Knit Circus for sending this beautiful package. I love it. I can't wait to think of something to make um, with my skein. Along with that, I am going to be sending off this beautiful new issue from Nomadic Knits. Um, this is issue 5, Vermont, and I have a couple of their magazines already. This is from the Nomadic Knits ladies who are Melissa and Becky, who are the most fabulous people you could ever imagine. I've been lucky enough to meet them at Rhinebeck, and this magazine is just beautiful. Um, the photography, the patterns, and the way that they pick a theme every month I think is so special and I'm really excited to be able to share this. Now, they sent a copy for me along with two extras, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to include one copy in a gift package and then I will have um, a second place winner and I will send to you uh, just the copy of the magazine and probably something small that I'll pop in the package. So there will be two prizes. And I thought since everyone else is donating all of this amazing stuff, I will include uh, one of my project bags that I kept aside for one of you. So this is the Origami Elephants, which I love so much. And um, you know what, this is what I'll do. This will be one prize. 
And then this, along with this, will be another prize. So I am going to start a thread in Ravelry because that is the only and best way that I know how to do a giveaway. That's not too complicated. And I don't really have anything major to um, ask you to do to enter. I'm just going to create a new thread over there called, um, I'll call it the October giveaway. And I will um, just ask each and every one of you who wants to enter to leave a post there. Um, why don't you guys tell me if you prefer a podcast like this or a vlog? Um, just a random question that will give me some insight into what you guys like and I will use that as an entry to uh, win one of the two prizes. So I'll post um, a thread up there today, probably before this video goes up, and I will draw a name the next time I podcast. So I don't know if that will be two or three weeks from now. We'll see what happens and um, I'm really excited to give those prizes away to one of you guys or two of you guys actually. So I think that covers almost everything. There was um, a favorite things I just wanted to share super, super quick as a mention. Um, because I was so busy, I haven't really been able to keep up on podcasts, but I'm really looking forward to this week doing some more knitting and sitting and catching up on some Vlogtobers. I know that some amazing people have been sharing Vlogtober videos on YouTube and I need to catch up on my Gaina, which is Tales from Cuckoo Land. I think I got that right, Gaina. I've missed her and um, I haven't been able to keep up, so I'm definitely doing that this week. Really looking forward to it. And I've started watching the Ollie and Bella podcast as well. Um, I've been watching that, I think, since the summer and really enjoying it. That's Sherry and she does amazing vlogs too. I really enjoy um, just putting on her videos while I'm doing stuff in my studio here or relaxing with my tea and knitting. So I thought I would recommend Sherry from the Ollie and Bella podcast because her Vlogtobers are also really good. I got a couple of them at the beginning of the month, but I also need to catch up on hers. So I think that's everything I wanted to share again today. So I just wanted to thank you guys for um, hanging out with me today. And uh, I hope you liked my little Rhinebeck weekend recap and that you guys are all doing well and I will see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.